Hi, my name is Suzanne Nelson. I play second bassoon with the Boston Symphony. I got my job in 2000, and before that I was second bassoon in the Montreal Symphony for five years. I'm gonna take you on a trip around the bassoon. I live in kind of a small house, so I don't have my own practice room. Quite often my practice space is either the dining room or here in our bedroom. Um, the bassoon is the base of the woodwinds. It is sort of the foundation of the woodwind section. We sit right in front of the trumpets. If you look really closely, you'll see plexiglass shields right behind our heads, and that protects us from the dreaded trumpets. The bassoon is in four parts. If you look I have bedazzled my bassoon. The story behind that is when my daughter was, I think four, I have to put my bassoon on a stand in the corner of our bedroom. And one day I came up to practice and my daughter had stuck little gemstones all over my bassoon. I left them on because I thought they were wonderful. Uh, they eventually all fell off, but this is a different bassoon from that time, and when I got it, I crazy glued all these rhinestones on it. And if you look really carefully, there's a yellow one here and a blue one there. The yellow one is for my son, whose favorite color is yellow, and the blue one is for my daughter, whose favorite color is blue. I can see it when I'm playing sometimes. If I sort of feel nervous, I sometimes look up there just to get a little bit of focus. So the bassoon is almost all together. I sit on a seat strap. It basically, for me, it's better than a, a neck strap because the weight is distributed not around my neck, which can get really tiring after a while. Um, I also put on a bungee cord that I attach to the back of my chair. I used to have a really ugly one it was green and red and it had red hooks. So I finally made my own. This is my, this is my tuxedo bungee cord. Okay. So it goes from the back of the chair and attaches onto a balance hanger like this. So I can basically have no weight on my left hand. It kind of gets heavy after a while. We tend to play for quite a long time. Now, the last thing, well, not the last thing, but the second to last thing is this, and it's called a vocal. And it's, I would equate it to a, a bow for string instruments. If you have a bad vocal, it's really gonna affect your, you could have the best bassoon in the world and if you have a bad vocal, it's just gonna be impossible to play beautifully. So the vocal goes here. And then you have to put on a reed. Bassoons play double reeds. I'll show you some of my cases. I have way too many reeds, but I just like to have choice. So this one, used to be a pencil case and I got my husband to drill holes in the top so that it can dry. The reeds can dry, they need to dry. And then I have, oh, look at all those reeds. They're all really good. But I do have some favorites. I tend, when I have reeds, I don't know if other bassoonists out there do that, but I, I rate them. So they'll go the best here, the best to the worst the best to the worst. And I kind of do that for all my reads. Sometimes I'll put numbers on them just to keep them straight. So I've chosen a couple reads that I'm gonna use and we have to put them in water because if you don't, I'll blow in one that's not wet. Some people play on dry reads, I don't. It doesn't really have a lot of flexibility. So bassoonists tend to put their reeds in water, it's water. And we soak them for a little bit while until they're flexible and everything. Do you see Jack? That's my audience. I play for him all the time. He's my best, best critic. Anyway, so I'm gonna let these soak for a little bit. And I'm gonna ask my son for a question. Jacob, do you have a question? Do you need glasses? <laughs> do I need glasses? 
Yes. And it was a magical moment when I realized that I needed glasses because suddenly I couldn't tell if it was a natural or a sharp. And that is very dangerous. That's a good question though, Jacob. It really is. Do you have another question? What is the name of your bassoon? What is the name of my bassoon? Her name is Mabel. And the reason her name is Mabel is she is a Canadian bassoon. She was made by a bassoonist called Benson Bell, and he lives up in Ontario. He lives in Ontario, and his last name is Bell. So in French, Ma Belle is my bell, and Ma Belle is also my beautiful, and Ma Belle, if shortened, becomes Mabel. There you go, that's my story. I tend to name my, my bassoons. Um, my first bassoon was Cecil. That was a good bassoon. Cecil's now with a student, actually no longer a student, uh, a fellow colleague. How many good reads do you have at a time? Wow. How many good reads do I have at a time? How does it, because I have so many boxes of reads in my case, I probably have 10 that I can choose from. I tend to choose it depending on the piece, so I will hopefully go with the same one or two reads for a week. I tend to have different types of reads that I use. Like there's more bouncy poppy reads and then there's more lyrical reads that I can kind of blow against to know that the resistance is good to play that type of music. It's a very, that's a very philosophical question. Now, when we're on the same topic, what, who's your favorite child? <laughs> <laughs> who's my favorite child? I can't choose. Oh. It's like choosing your favorite read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good. Okay, that's a good question. Let's go. Okay, so bassoon. So the bassoon uses all ten fingers, kind of like the piano. Uh, if you look here, I have nine fingers. For the left thumb and then on the other side I have four sort of five for my right thumb and then every finger some of them have two and then pinky also so we have very busy fingers I am slightly um, accident prone I would say and I tend to cut my fingers while I'm making salads and cutting up fruits and vegetables and stuff. So I have cut the end of this thumb off. That was in Montreal, right before we had to play this piece, right before we had to play a very big bassoon excerpt. So I'm gonna play it for you. So by the end of the piece, I ended up going to work and playing that piece and just getting, I'm not even going to say that's the end of the story. You can get the idea. Bassoons never play princesses or pretty people or um, lovely ladies and birds and fairies and beautiful things. We tend to play ugly, fat, funny, old um, drunk kind of characters. And that's okay, because I kind of like that. So here's another um, excerpt of, of a character that the bassoon plays in Peter and the Wolf. Jacob, I'm going to get you to guess which one it is, okay? The grandfather? That was the grandfather. Very good. Very good. We play on double reeds. <clears throat> they're bigger than oboe reeds, but they're smaller than contrabassoon reeds. Contrabassoon reeds literally sound like a duck call. 
no offense to any of you Contra Bassoon players, I love you all, but right? Right? Um, bassoon reads sound like this. So due to the coronavirus, we are basically stuck at home, which is great. I'm organizing things and throwing out stuff. But in organizing my music, I found one of the first pieces I ever learned on bassoon. I will play for you. This is like a typical bassoon excerpt. She's going to ask me a few questions. Ronnie? When did you start playing the bassoon? Oh, good question. I started playing the bassoon when I was 13 years old, so that's grade six. I started in Canada, so we start a little bit later than schools in America. Um, but I didn't even know what a bassoon was. I wanted to take trumpet, and I asked the trumpet professor at the University of Alberta if I could study with him, and he said, you know, you look like a bassoon player. So I didn't know if that was an insult or a compliment because I had no idea what a bassoon was. I looked in the encyclopedia. The picture was like this big. Actually, maybe probably that was probably that big. Um, and I didn't know if the bassoon was like this big or, or, you know, I didn't know anything about it. So when I saw the picture, I thought it was really cool. I ordered one and it came about a week later. I rented it from the University of Alberta and I fell in love with it immediately. So that was kind of... Um, it stole my heart. Do you have another question? Tell the audience some interesting facts about the bassoon. Oh, okay. So the bassoon has named joints. If that makes any sense. I'm going to come a little closer. Okay. So I already showed you my bell with the, the rhinestones. Do you see them? So this is the bell. The sound doesn't even come out of the bell. I don't know why it's called the bell. This joint is the long joint. And way back when the bassoon was first made, this joint came to about here, hence the long joint. Now I have a cut of a bassoon called the gentleman's cut, gentle person's cut, um, which all the joints are the same height. So this is a long joint. The next joint is called the wing joint. I don't know if you can see that it has sort of a wing to it right here. It's called the wing joint. And last, this is called the boot. Don't know why it's called a boot, but it's called the boot. Now, I'm gonna put it all back together because it's kind of interesting how the sound of the bassoon goes through the bassoon. It doesn't, it comes through the bell on one note and that is when you have all the keys closed. And then once you start opening the keys, they kind of go up sort of like that. The sound starts coming out of those holes. Just to impress your friends, there are some keys on the bassoon that are also named. Um, this key right here, which is basically the octave key. So you put it down when you want to play lower. So I use that key a lot. It's called the whisper key. So that's the whisper key. It's all, it's, Whisper key. You will amaze your friends with that knowledge. This key right here, also a thumb key, is called the pancake key. No idea why it's named the pancake key, but it's if you notice, it's round. It's called the pancake key because it's round. I know, but does it, it looks like a pancake. Yeah. Piece. And then if it's square, do you know what it's called? French toast key. <laughs> oh, that's really good. <laughs> no, it's called the waffle key. Oh. 
But I like French toast better. Yeah. I may have actually call it French toast. So the way the wind travels through the bassoon, a little double reed, as you've seen. Without the reed. So this is very necessary. Double reed on the vocal. The air goes through the vocal, past the wing joint, along the boot, and then at the end of the boot, it does a little U and comes back through the other side of the boot into the long joint and out the bell. I'll just play a couple notes for you. <laughs> Why do you call it a double reed? We call it a double reed because there are two pieces of cane vibrating on each other. And I, I will come and demonstrate. So clarinet, saxophones, they all have single reeds on top of a mouthpiece and that vibrates on each other. But the bassoon has two reeds that vibrate on each other. It starts life as a straight piece of cane. It kind of looks like bamboo. And then we do a bunch of scraping, a lot of those really, really, really sharp knives, all that. I'm not gonna go into that. But then we fold it over and then we cut the tip and then we have pieces of cane vibrating on each other. And we spend far too long worrying about these things. These things can make your life heaven or hell. Do you have a question, Ronnie? Yes. Out of your amount of reeds that you make, how many are good reeds? I wish I could say more than 50%. I would say probably 50%, which is better than they used to be. Um, Cause I guess I'm getting old. I'm learning, I'm learning how to make reeds. It's, it's forever fight. I think even um, different seasons, kind of like wine can depend on how the cane is. So, you know, you get the luck of, I've had experience in my life where I made 50 reeds and two of them were good enough to bring to the concert. A good reed is also relative because it can mean a reed that you can practice on and you sound pretty good, but the next stage is getting it to the stage. And that's another level of perfection. And then it doesn't always cut it. <laughs>